So in terms of the, the way in which botulinum toxin acts on a nerve, I think it's important for us to go through how um, a, a normal neuromuscular junction operates. So at the nerve ending of the neuromuscular junction, um, preformed acetylcholine vesicles reside waiting for a nerve impulse to travel down that nerve. And we can see this in the diagram here indicated um, by these little acetylcholine vesicles. Um, when an impulse reaches the neuromuscular junction, uh, it causes acetylcholine vesicles to dock to the terminal of the junction, which you can see occurring in the diagram here. Uh, the ACH vesicles, or acetylcholine vesicles, fuse and release acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft, which we can see occurring at this point here. And then, as we know, uh, the acetylcholine then binds to our ligand-gated ion channels, opening them and allowing for muscle contraction to occur. Now the botulinum toxin itself, uh, it, it's, it's made of two components and scientists believe uh, that these components are important for different means. It contains a heavy chain and a light chain. Scientists believe that the heavy chain is uh, important for docking to receptors on the outside of the uh, neuron allowing for the internalization of the botulinum toxin whilst the light chain is more responsible for the actual cleaving process which I'm going to talk to you about now. So the botulinum toxin is internalized into the neuron via endocytosis forming a toxin vesicle. Um, the toxin's light chain is then released from this toxin containing vesicle into the cytoplasm of the nerve terminal. Now this light chain uh, blocks acetylcholine release by cleaving components of that snare complex that we spoke about before, the binding complex of acetylcholine. Now obviously if our acetylcholine vesicle cannot bind to our membrane, then it makes sense that uh, acetylcholine cannot be released into our synaptic cleft and thus will not reach the postsynaptic muscle membrane. This means that no muscle contraction will occur and thus is coined a term that scientists call flaccid paralysis. Now the mode of action for our tetanus toxin is slightly different to that of our botulism toxin. Uh, tetanus exotoxin is a neurotoxin that binds to inhibitory interneurons of our spinal cord and blocks their release of inhibitory neurotransmitters. Now it is these inhibitors from the inhibitory interneurons that eventually allow contracted muscle to sort of relax by stopping excitatory neurons from releasing uh, the acetylcholine that is responsible for muscle contraction. Now the toxin, by blocking these inhibitories, uh, these inhibitory uh, neurotransmitters, keeps the muscle in a state of constant contraction and leads to spastic paralysis, a condition where opposing flexor and extensor muscles simultaneously contract. And that's why in this photo here we can see a soldier who's dying of tetanus and all his muscles are contracting due to the fact that his inhibitory interneurons are being blocked by the uh, tetanus toxin and thus all his uh, major muscles, his back and his biceps and his legs are all contracting uh, in spastic paralysis.